Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. Oh, man, today we have on the infamous, the famous Phoenix Coriel. Phoenix, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Thanks. You're a man of many words, aren't you? Not really. <laughs> okay. All right, Phoenix. We are. Uh, we have to make uh, an announcement today, a special announcement. We're starting something new, something big on the Home Defense Show, and it has to do with video. Tell everyone what did you get just a, just yesterday? What did you? What came in the mail for you? A camera. A camera, and it shoots video, uh, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. And so, what are you going to be doing for the Home Defense Show? I'm going to be taking videos. That's right. You are my new cameraman, aren't you? My nine-year-old cameraman, Phoenix Quinn Coriel. So, uh, Phoenix, are you cock-locked and ready to rock? Yeah. All right. So, today we will be shooting some videos. I'm thinking maybe I'll do a little bit of shooting, uh, some type of instructional stuff. Uh, Just little two- to four-minute videos that I can also post on Home Defense Show. And people can view those, comment, and just get some free training. That sound good to you, Phoenix? Yeah. All right. I know you're excited about that. All right, Phoenix. I know uh, you get you got to get back to work, and I got to get back to the show. So, Phoenix, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show, and we'll be seeing more of you in the future as my cameraman. Thanks for having me. All right. Head upstairs, Phoenix. Okay. All right. Love you, buddy. Love you too. Bye. <laughs> All right, lots of changes around here. Uh, I just I moved my studio down in the basement. Um, boy, I had a fit down here last week when I did the uh, show uh, with Ruth Price. Just an awesome story about her son, Gunnery Sergeant uh, Daniel Price. But we had technological fits. It was like, uh, you know, a a techno grand mall seizure, right? Uh, You know, the uh, internet wouldn't reach down here in the basement. I had terrible sound quality. And I tried to record the show. Couldn't do it. I ended up just recording it off my cell phone uh, while I was in my car parked next to a railroad track. I had to roll up all the windows in 95 degree heat, turn off the the car so I didn't have any ambient noise and just pray that a a train didn't go by. It was still terrible sound quality, but trust me folks, it could have been worse. I've ordered some new equipment. It should be coming here in a few days. So uh, next week, get ready uh, for much better sound quality, less technological snafus. So I'm certainly looking forward to that. It'll make my life a lot easier. Uh, what's the count now? Uh, as far as the, what's the body count on uh, rodentias? Uh, you know, we're talking, you know, possums and raccoons, fox, you name it. Oh, geez, I think we've got uh, 20, uh, about 24, 25 possum. Um, and then uh, about six or seven raccoons. Got a couple more this morning. We're just... Uh, we're trying to get rid of all of them, at least within a square mile of, of my chickens. And we're going really good on that. Call me heartless, but I don't really care. Uh, you know, actually, my son, Cedar, he's taking hunter education uh, this week. And, you know, I really think it's important for kids growing up in America to learn how to use guns uh, and to actually hunt. Because somehow you have to offset this mamby-pamby, milk toast, I'm a wussy snowflake who's going to melt if I see something die. Uh, you know, and we're talking about, you know, mosquitoes, beetles, butterflies, raccoons. 
you know what? Let your kid go out there and, and shoot a rabies-infested raccoon. Go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt anything. You don't want them totally John Wick desensitized to killing. But sometimes it has to be done and they have to be able to do it. So don't raise a wussy. Don't raise a wimp. If you've got a boy, turn him into a man. If you've got a girl, turn her into a woman. Yeah, I'm not being politically correct, but I really don't care. So toughen up. Reach down, grab some scrot, and, uh, you know, cinch that jock strap a little bit tighter. And uh, we're going to, you know, turn out some uh, masculine people here. Uh, gun-toting people who will protect and defend their families, innocent people, even strangers. That's what we want to do here. Okay, let's head on out to the news here. Uh, we're going to have Gabe Suarez on later in the show from Suarez International. And we're going to be talking about um, active shooters, uh, different aspects about that. Most notably, how can the average concealed carry holder um, survive the active shooting event and how can he uh, keep from getting shot by the good guys when they show up and I notice here in bearingarms.com uh, article by Tom Knighton titled disgruntled employee kills to wounds officer inside Walmart when I first started carrying a firearm it was kind of a tradition to carry at Walmart <laughs> yeah me too after all, it's a place where you're likely to be around a fair number of people, which meant that if no one seemed to notice you were carrying, you were kind of doing it right, or not. I honestly don't know where the tradition started, but it was something concealed carry permit holders all over the state of Georgia did. However, I can't help but wonder what would have happened had someone been carrying on a similar tradition at a Mississippi Walmart yesterday. A disgruntled employee killed two Walmart colleagues and wounded a responding police officer Tuesday in far northwest Mississippi, authorities said. The deadly incident started at about 6.32 a.m. at the superstore before another responding officer eventually wounded the shooter, who was then taken into custody, a South Haven police dispatcher said. Two employees were senselessly murdered this morning in our city, South Haven Police Chief Macon Moore told reporters. South Haven is a suburb of Memphis, Tennessee, which is about 16 miles away. The shooter is in custody and was identified by police as Martez Terrell Abram, 39. Abram wounded one officer before the other brought him down, police said. Authorities said Abrams was suspended. You know, you ever notice how when uh, these active shooters, when they get in a gunfight with the cops, they always seem to lose? Huh. I bet it has something to do with training. Anyways. Authorities said Abrams was suspended from Walmart pending the outcome of an investigation, according to a statement from South Haven Police Department. You know, it's hard to get suspended from Walmart. you got to do something bad, because it's hard for them to just get employees. Quote, one of our officers was shot at this time. He was saved by his vest, Moore said. At this point, the suspect was engaged by another officer. He was struck twice by gunfire from our officer. He was taken into custody. South Haven Mayor Darren Musselwhite called the shooter a disgruntled employee. <laughs> disgruntled. So, so you kill two people, shoot a cop, you're upset. No kidding. I think disgruntled might be a little weak. There's probably a stronger term we can use. He had a personal grievance with his employer. That last bit is important since despite this taking place somewhere that we may tend to think of as fairly crowded, in the wake of Gilroy, it would be easy to assume this is yet another mass shooting. That doesn't appear to be the case. After all, no one else was hurt. It appears Abram targeted the two managers because he was angry with them, then likely shot the police officer rather than be taken to prison. You know, it's unfortunate that the police officer wasn't a better shot. You know, you cops out there, you know, civilians as well. You know, be the best shot that you can be. Uh, you know, otherwise it costs, um, you know, the, the public a, a load of money to prosecute these people. And then you put them in prison and you got to feed them and clothe them. 
if you're a better shot, then you don't have to worry about all that stuff, okay? So just practice, you guys. Practice, 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 uh, and then make good, better shots. Now, this not being a mass shooting doesn't make it less awful. Yeah, you got to, according to the FBI, it's not a mass shooting unless you, you should kill four people. And my heart goes out to the family of those killed. There's a lot not mentioned in the report, of course, including just why Abram was suspended. Clearly, he didn't figure he'd be exonerated by the investigation for whatever reason. Then again, he may not have been doing much in the way of figuring. It's impossible to know what the heck was going through the mind of someone who would do something like this. Luckily, Abram wasn't so far gone that he decided to kill everyone in the store that he could. He had just two managers and, and a cop. I'm very glad I'm not writing that kind of story right now. He wasn't that far gone, thankfully. You know, he was gone. He was gone. Too far gone. Still, I can't help but wonder what would have happened had someone with a concealed carry permit been in the store. Could they have ended the threat and minimized the loss of life? Obviously, it would depend on a number of factors, but it's a possibility and why we need as many people carrying as humanly possible. You know... <laughs> Maybe in segment four in the wrap-up, uh, if we have time, I'll tell you my Walmart concealed carry story. I don't remember if I put it in any of my books or not, um, but uh, I tell you, <laughs> I've had some Walmart experiences. Uh, rather embarrassing, actually. But, hey, never mind. Uh, We'll talk about that in segment four if we have time. And it is educational and entertaining. All right, we got a break coming up here, two minute break. But when we come back, we're going to be speaking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Um, while we're away, go ahead and check out suarezinternational.com. See what kind of guy we got coming on here. If you're a veteran of the Home Defense Show, you know Gabe Suarez. He doesn't pull any punches, he tells it like it is. <laughs> and he is entertaining as well as educational and encouraging. The three E's, entertaining, educational, encouraging. All right, folks, we got a two-minute break. While we're away, go ahead and check out our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical, and see what they can do to help you and your family protect the ones you love from the criminal justice system. And then also check out Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, centershotgunrange.com where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Do you have a story inside you yearning to come out? As a self-published author, you are free to creatively distribute your book online or using your own professional connections. White Feather Press will publish your manuscript and set up online distribution, allowing the author to retain all copyright and distribution rights as well as all profits. Check out White Feather Press at publishyourdream.com. White Feather Press, reaffirming faith in God, family, and country. Go to publishyourdream.com today. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 19 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book, by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Would you like to take your tactical and marksmanship training to the next level? If the answer is yes, you need to check out Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, just south of Grand Rapids, conveniently located off US-131. Center Shot is one of the most advanced firing ranges in Michigan. Center Shot firing lanes have nearly 100 customizable shooting programs to make you better no matter what your skill level. Our advanced lanes allow a more immersive training experience to enhance your senses. Controlled lighting and target movement mean that you get the best practice and most fun out of Center Shot Indoor Gun Range. Memberships are available for as low as $150. Center Shot also offers a 10% discount to U.S. military veterans. 
So, no matter what the weather, hot, cold, or in between, Center Shot Indoor Gun Range is always a perfect 70 degrees. This is where I train every week, and so should you. Find out more by going to centershotgunrange.com or call them at 616-371-7468. Stay safe, and I'll see you at Center Shot Indoor Gun Range. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Today we are speaking with one of my favorite guests. His name is Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Gabe, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Hey, thanks for having me back. Hey, not a problem. You know, Gabe, you really are one of my my favorite uh, uh, guests to have on the show, simply because you pretty much, if you're thinking it, you're saying it. And I, I really... I really appreciate that, especially in the world that we uh, that we live in today. Um, so, hey, I just I like that frank, candid nature, and you're just funny as a rubber crutch. I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but you know when I read your your emails, you know your articles, things like that, I just start laughing. And it's not what you're saying; it's the way that you say it. Do you do that on purpose, or does it just kind of? I guess I do. Uh, no, you know what? I I, uh, I have been blessed with the ability to uh, write the way I speak, but you know, hopefully in a in a more articulate manner than just a, a you know coffee house conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, my experience, you know, as a writer, a lot of people uh, that don't write well, it's because they try and be something that they're not. Uh, they try to, yeah. you know, they're just totally different, and it comes off as fake and artificial and highfalutin. So, you know, when in doubt, just be yourself. So, um, exactly. Hey, today, Gabe, we want to talk about. Uh, some people might think this is controversial. I think it's just common sense. But you know, I want I want to talk about uh, you know mass shooters, active shooter scenarios. Uh, you know, the, the, the general basic civilian, you know, how do you handle situations like that? How do you not get shot by the cops? Things like that. What, what's your take on that? Well, you know, uh, that's, that's something that, uh, I, I remember when I first started talking about this, you know, some 10 years ago, uh, a lot of people in the industry, you know, thought I was uh, being, uh, you know, uh, uh, crazy and, you know, a mall ninja and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you just kind of want to look back and say, well, how about now? Uh, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we saw this, yeah, we saw this becoming more prolific and, uh, you know, so, uh, we, we, uh, take steps to teach guys how to comport themselves in these situations and not just CCW guys, but, you know, there's a, there's a plethora of off duty under, uh, law enforcement people out and about at any time people think that you know the law enforcement guys when they're off duty they sit at home by the phone waiting for a call out or something like that and you know that's not true they they go to they go to parks they go to malls they take their families out they go and do the same things that everybody does uh and uh the the reality of happening having it to happening to be the guy on scene the guy at ground zero uh, when one of these things kicks off is, you know, just as likely as anything else in life now. Yeah. So, well, um, but yeah, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, I was just uh, thinking, you talk about off-duty cops, you know, a lot of the off-duty cops, um, certainly some of them that get involved in these uh, mass shooting altercations, a lot of them are like reserve cops, auxiliary cops, you know, they're not full-time, they may not even be paid but they still, they're trained and they have that warrior mindset and they're distributed throughout society. Uh, and sometimes sure. they can do a lot of good. Yeah. You know, and, and that, uh, it's not just, uh, the, you know, the, the off duty or the, the reserve guys or whatever, but it's just, you know, regular everyday, you know, Joe CCW, uh, that, that happens to be Johnny on the spot, that particular, uh, that particular moment. Uh, and, and you know the, the 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 common theme or the common thread through all of these is 
you've got a good guy that's armed that is trying to remedy the situation, save innocence, but they don't happen to be wearing a police uniform. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, so they, they have to take into consideration what the perception is going to be by not only law enforcement responders, but by people that happen to see them uh, going and attempting to interdict the, the situation. Are they going to think this is an off-duty law enforcement guy that is trying to solve the problem, or is this an additional shooter? Yeah. And I think that has to do with, uh, you know, physical appearance, attire, even the weapons that uh, that you choose. Yeah. Well, Gabe, um, you're a retired cop. When you respond mm -hmm. to uh, a situation, a mass shooting event, what is the officer's state of mind, and how are they going to come in? Well, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody uh, that's on the job today or even the, that was on the job when uh, when I was on the job, but the guys that are going to respond to something like this, in other words, become players as opposed to, you know, go and try try to, you know, secure people or try and call. or In other words, they, they're taking an active role in stopping this. Um, they're the, the meat eaters, you know, and, and uh, so their mindset is, Let's find the shooter and kill him. That's yeah. what they're trying to do. They're not trying to arrest him. They're not trying to challenge him. They're going to find him. As soon as they identify him, they're going to shoot him. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, even even those guys, though, <clears throat> they, they do keep in the forefront of their mind that uh, they have to be certain about who the shooter is because there may be guys just like them that happen to have been there uh, that are now trying to resolve the issue that may not be readily identifiable. That's got to be tough because, you know, you got that adrenaline dump in your bloodstream. You know, I, I just, that, that's kind of got to muddy the waters uh, for the guys well, sure, coming it does, in. Absolutely. But yeah, I guess that, that's why they get paid the big bucks, right, to go in there. <laughs> it's not an easy job. You know, being well, a cop, yeah. it's not supposed to be an easy job. Well, no, but uh, well, that's I, you know, that could be a show all into itself. But no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But you know, the thing is that in the profession, you get the full spectrum of everything you get in society. Um, you get people that are very cool under fire. You get people that are not. Uh, you get people that are very analytical and detached. You get people that are emotional. Uh, and they're not robocops. They're, they're they're regular folks. And uh, you know, when when you you, uh, you happen to combine a bad guy, a jihadist, an active shooter with a guy who's a meat eater and a gunfighter, you have a very quick and easy resolution of the event. Yeah. Uh, when you don't have that combination, you may have a different result. Now, are there some things that the, uh, you know, Johnny Civilian can do when he's in an active shooter event are there things that he can do uh, to keep from getting shot by, by the police? Yeah, uh, the, so, you know, some of these are not going to be politically correct, but, I mean, you know, you know how much I worry about that. <laughs> um, you know, the, the first thing is, um, you know, look at how these active shooter guys dress. They're usually wearing some sort of, you know, tactical gear and stuff like that. And So don't don't walk around dressed like that. You know, leave the the 511 tuxedo at home, leave the BDUs at home, just dress like a normal guy. You know, you don't have to do the, the what do they call it, the, the Friday casual. You don't have to dress like that. I mean, like, you know, today it's hot out here. You know, we got the monsoons. I'm, I'm wearing a tank top and shorts, okay? Yeah. But, uh, you know, so dress like a normal person. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the your physical appearance, you know, my taste is, you know, well-groomed. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's bad if you, you know, aren't like that. But, you know, everything's got its price. Yeah. And if when when you pull that pistol out and you join the party, okay, if the, 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 the image that you present is this could be another bad guy as opposed to this could be an off-duty law enforcement guy, you know, there's a price for that. The price for misidentification might be getting shot by somebody. You yeah. Know? That's unfortunate, but that's reality. Okay, I deal in reality, not making people feel better about themselves. <laughs> uh, you know, and and that's the the, the second thing is, uh, yeah. And listen, let me back backpedal for just a minute here. Physical appearance includes 
you know, your, your grooming, your fitness level, your attire, uh, the way you handle your weapon as well. Uh, I remember the, uh, the, this was some years ago. I mean, we've had so many, the trolley square shooting in Utah. Uh, there was an off duty guy that first engaged the, uh, the active shooter. And during the engagement, uh, you know, they, he made, uh, visual contact with, uh, uh, a uniformed sergeant, I believe it was. And later when the sergeant was interviewed, they said, well, what, what, what did you think when you first saw the, uh, the off duty guy? And they didn't know each other, from what I understand. But uh, he said the guy looked like he was one of us. He 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 was clean cut. He was handling his weapon like a professional. His demeanor and his actions didn't lead me to believe that he was a suspect. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's I think imperative. Uh, you know, and the, the third factor is you know what weapon are you going to take to this? You know, you you pull out some gold plated Desert Eagle or something. Well, that's not the kind of stuff. You know the law enforcement guys would carry on or off duty. Uh, you know, I'm going to pull out my folding stock AK out of my <laughs> backpack. You know what? You, any long gun that you happen to bring in with you guarantees, I think, identification as the active yeah, shooter. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, you know, while we're on that topic, uh, taking out a, a mass shooter, you know, the uh, by the average guy, I have so many people that that come to my uh, classes and they've got, I don't want to call them pea shooters, but you know, the, the little compact guns might be a, a 380 or just something with a, a six round magazine, maybe a Smith and Wesson mm -hmm. bodyguard, things like that. And you know, it's what they're willing to carry every day. Sure. But that's not the gun that I want to take into a gunfight, and I just wondered what your opinion is. Yeah, you know, I mean, e even wearing a tank top and shorts today, I'm still carrying, uh, you know, I've got a Glock 17 that's cut to 19 length, and I've got a couple of spare magazines on my belt. Mm -hmm. That's my normal everyday wear. I can pull it off, and it's not a big deal. Now, that gives me options. It allows me to stay in the fight longer. It allows me to express uh, my shooting skills to a better degree than if I was carrying a J frame 38. That's not to say that, you know, you shouldn't carry the J frame 38 if that's the only thing that you have the ability to carry. Any gun is better than no gun, of course, but the thing that we have to remember is that some guns give you more options, uh, and, and more staying power and more reach than others. And so, uh, you know, if, if you have the ability to carry a full size fighting pistol i'm you know i'm talking about something you know minimum size like a glock 26 or uh you know i, I don't know which version the uh the 6320 but they're like the, the compact version that would be the minimum uh suggested you know uh, 365 sig is it's okay but you're giving up a lot for that concealment same thing yeah. with the the 43 42 series you're giving up a lot for that concealment if the concealment is super important because of your lifestyle and situation it is what it is but understand you're you're uh, you're compromising yeah you know th that's one of the things that i talk about with the uh the church safety teams that i uh consult with you know i, I have several of them they'll, they'll come in and they'll all have compact guns you know with like seven round magazine capacity short barrels and I explained to them, I said, guys, you're not trying to stop a mugging here. You know, the gun that you have, yeah, you'll be okay in a mugging, you know, uh, something routine. But when you're defending, you know, 500 people, you might be shooting, you know, 75, 150 feet. And that gun will never perform as well as uh, right. a full frame gun. And you know, I, just, I get the impression that a lot of these guys, they carry a gun as like a teddy bear. It makes them feel better mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, to yeah. have it. But that's not why I carry a gun. I carry a gun because I might actually have to use it, and I want right. to be prepared in every situation. Right, exactly, exactly. All right, so we had appearance and the proper weapon. Uh, what else you thinking, Gabe? Hmm. Wow. Let's see. Um, well, you know what? I, I, I believe actions when 
uh, engaging the uh, the suspect and actions when engaged by law enforcement. Those two are crucial aspects of this. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you know what? Well, let's uh, pick that up in the uh, next segment because we're out of time for this segment, and we'll uh, we'll uh, keep talking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. One of my favorite guests. While we're away, we got a two-minute break. Go ahead and check out our sponsors, farmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical, and also Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Phoenix Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Back. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 19 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book, by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Would you like to take your tactical and marksmanship training to the next level? If the answer is yes, you need to check out Center Shot Indoor Gun Range just south of Grand Rapids, conveniently located off US-131. Center Shot is one of the most advanced firing ranges in Michigan. Center Shot firing lanes have nearly 100 customizable shooting programs to make you better no matter what your skill level. Our advanced lanes allow a more immersive training experience to enhance your senses. Controlled lighting and target movement mean that you get the best practice and most fun out of Center Shot indoor gun range. Memberships are available for as low as $150. Center Shot also offers a 10% discount to U.S. military veterans. So, no matter what the weather, hot, cold, or in between, Center Shot Indoor Gun Range is always a perfect 70 degrees. This is where I train every week, and so should you. Find out more by going to centershotgunrange.com or call them at 616-371-7468. Stay safe, and I'll see you at Center Shot Indoor Gun Range. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my new book, Concealed Carry for Christians. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and your family, and that includes people of faith. Our churches are not as safe as they used to be, and that's why I included chapters on forming church safety teams and stopping mass shooters. You can get Concealed Carry for Christians real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Concealed Carry for Christians, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Concealed Carry for Christians by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. There's your host, Skip Coriel. Today we are speaking with one of my favorite guests, Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Now, Gabe, before we go any, any further, um, you know, I forgot to uh, have you tell the listeners, how can we get a hold of uh, Suarez International? Uh, well, the easiest way is the website, you know. Uh, it's uh, www.suarezinternational.com. That's S-U-A-R-E-Z, and then the word international.com. And uh, that's the landing page, and from there you can go to everything from training to our online forum, my blog, 
uh, you know, and of course our store because we're all capitalists. So come and buy some stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, now Gabe, um, point number three. Okay, so um, you know we talked about uh, uh, appearance, we talked about weapon selection, and that sort of thing. The, the, the entire idea is the mission is actually twofold. One is that uh, you know, of course, to eliminate the bad guy to stop the threat to save innocence and so on but the second mission is to not get shot by the good guys yeah. by mistake which could happen um you know so um you you don't want to uh, you know bring the weapon out uh too soon and leave it out too long uh the analogy i use in my classes is uh you know the uh, that, that movie lord of the rings when uh uh, Frodo, he, when he puts the ring on, you know, all the evil guys can see him. When he takes it off, they can't see him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a similar <laughs> thing for us. You know, when the pistol's in the holster concealed, you're just a regular guy like anybody else. You're not a player in the party. The minute you pull that pistol out, now you're a player. And everybody that's another player is going to see you. Yeah. Uh, so you want to be very uh, circumspect about when to deploy. You also want to be uh, very careful about putting it back soonest. Um, I don't like the idea of leaving the gun out. So, you know, we're not in an active shooter event. You're not going to be arresting anyone. You're not going to be challenging a bad guy. There's a bad guy. Okay, great. You know, you got 15 rounds in your Glock 19. 14 of them should be in his face. Right. Uh, you know, and then you reload and you go back to the holster. You know, because you don't want to be misidentified if if you can avoid it. Yeah. Um, so you know, deploy quickly, solve the problem, and then go back to your, uh, you know, your your level of invisibility, shall we say? Yeah. You know, you're not going to go. I'm sorry. Go. No, Gabe. Uh, you know, just I think it was about four or five months ago, may, maybe uh, uh, early in the year. I believe a church in Texas. They had an armed church safety team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had they had a guy down uh, who was attempting to be an active shooter and they had him held down at gunpoint. Five minutes later, the cops show up and they shoot one of the church safety team members because he's yeah. holding a gun. And it's yeah. like, yeah, you're right. You got to put the gun away when you don't need it anymore. As soon as it's safe, you know, hide the gun. Yeah. Everybody expects that the law enforcement guys are all going to be Jack Bauer level, you know, <laughs> operators. And that's just not the case. They're, they're a cross section of society. You know, you want more Jack Bauer level operators that, you know, they got ice water in the veins and stuff like that. You know, you want a bunch of guys like that, pay them more. Yeah. <laughs> because if you don't do that, uh, you're not going to get the, the, the high level of operator. You're going to get guys that, you know what? Because, I, look, I, I wouldn't take the police job for less than a couple hundred grand a year now. Yeah. You know, well, we can't pay you that. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to do something else. You know, um, so, and the other thing is, and not, not really so much a part of, of um, you know, being misidentified, but, uh, well, I guess it is. You know, your your demeanor, you cannot allow yourself to get overly excited. Because if you get overly excited, your emotions are going to run rampant, and you're not going to make good decisions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I suspect, and I don't have all the details of that particular shooting, but I suspect that when the the uh, the law enforcement guys responded to this, they didn't have complete information because whoever was giving them the information was probably very emotional in its delivery. Mm -hmm. And moreover, when they arrived on scene, the guys that were involved in this were probably very emotional as well. And now you have a recipe for disaster. You have aggressive law enforcement guys coming out. You have misinformation, and you have emotional people on scene that are armed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what? I don't think we can expect that everything's always going to go well. Uh, so, you know, understand that the law enforcement guys are going to be coming, uh, and and if you can tactically and safely avoid having that pistol in your hand when they make first contact, that is to your benefit. Okay? Yeah. There's no low readies. There's no you know, challenging, there's no nothing. You deploy, you take down the threat with extreme prejudice, you look around real quick to make sure there's no additional threats, and then you go back to holster, and now, you know, you're not going to be perceived as a potential threat. Uh, if you do have the pistol in your hand uh, when the police arrive and they challenge you, they're in control. Do whatever. They tell you, okay, do three backflips and sing the national anthem. 
you know, go ahead and do it. Okay? That's not the time to argue about your rights or explain that you're the good guy or, you know, you know, shut your mouth, do as you're told, let them control the scene, and then after the smoke clears, everything will get sorted out. But at the time that you're you're being contacted, do as you're told, don't argue. Whatever you do, do it slowly. Um, if you get conflicting commands, because that'll happen, freeze in place and don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, you know, because again, law enforcement guys, they're, they're, they're not all Jack Bauer types, you know, some of them are, but some of them are not. Uh, and, and there's going to be emotion. There's guys that are going to the active shooter and their, 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 uh, mental state is delight. That's why they join. That's why they're there. They want to deploy on the bad guys. Yeah. There's other guys that their mental state is, Oh my God, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I'm terrified. I'm about to crap myself, you know? And so who do you get? I don't know. It's up for the draw. So you, you behave as if the person that is contacting you is not Jack Bauer. You know, you, you express yourself slowly. You move slowly. You do as you're told. No sudden moves. You know, and if it comes to dropping that $1,500 blaster or whatever, you know, that's what you do. Let it fall to the ground, you know, and, and keep your hands up and, you know, and I teach my guys, keep repeating, I'm the good guy. I'm the good guy. Or, you know, if they're a retired law enforcement, I'm a, I'm a police officer, a blue on blue, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, you can, you can add, please do not shoot me. I'm a good guy. I'm not a threat and, and loud so they can hear. Yeah. Okay. Is this what the bad guy would do? Probably not. So you're taking a moment to give them pause about what your real identity is. If you get a chance to call the police before they arrive, uh, it's always a good idea to give a description of yourself. You mm-hmm. know, hey, I, I'm here at the active shooter. I've shot the active shooter. You know, he's right down here. Listen, I don't want any misidentification. I know you guys are coming. You know, I'm a retired police officer, you know, male white, 5'10", 175. I'm wearing a, you know, blue tank top and brown shorts. My weapon is back in the holster. Please tell the guys I'm not a threat to them. I'm a good, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that the information they're getting is current or the information that they're getting first seen, you know, there was, in other words, when they first make contact is not one where here's a threat that I need to eliminate, but more of one like, wait a minute, what have I got here? Is he one of us? Okay. Yeah. And that creates that, that, that lag in decision time that keeps you safe. Uh, this is Skip Coriola on the Home Defense. We're speaking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International about surviving an active uh, shooter event. Now, Gabe, um, you know, one of those points, you, you, you know, you said, you know, you take out your weapon, you do your job, you put the bad guy down, you put, you put it back up, you cover it back up again. You can't do that without proper training. So can you talk about That's some right. of the, some of the yeah. training that you might recommend for the average Joe as far as taking out an active shooter? Do you have drills that you like or you know what should they be doing? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, you know, I mean, of course I think my training is the best, but you know, not everybody's going to come to my training. Um, but what what I would what I would tell them is look, there's two different types of paradigms here for engagement. You know, you got the mugger in the parking lot with the screwdriver. That's a self-defense shooting. Or, you know, the, the attempted carjacking or the attempted robbery or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, those events are under the standard rules of engagement where, you know, you're, you're defending your life and all that sort of thing. That everybody gets hammered into them during their, their CCW and formative training and everything else. But the active shooter is a different paradigm. Um, you know, you're not acting necessarily to defend yourself, although you might be if you happen to be the first guy that they point a gun at, but you're acting on behalf of others. You're there because of moral reasons. Uh, moral reasons preclude you from just running away like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and because of the nature of these events, and I suggest that, you know, guys that are interested, they said they do their own research. All this information is available online. What happened in this event? What happened at that event? You know? Uh, and uh, understand that the the tempo of these events is intense. The bad guy's got a free window to be able to kill whoever he wants, and that window closes hopefully when the police arrive. So between the time that he announces himself and the time that the police arrives, he's got a free killing time. If you happen to be there, well, you can close that window for him 
faster. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, you, so there's, there's no need to challenge him. There's no need to order him to drop his weapon. There's no need for all of the niceties that are usually in place in a typical self-defense shooting. This is what we call proactive shooting. The minute that he pulls out his weapon and starts shooting innocents, he's bought and paid for with a big ribbon on him and a sign that says, Merry Christmas, Skip. <laughs> this is yours. Right. You know? So you, you take advantage of that. You you deal with him, and you secure the weapon. And that's it. There's nothing else. You know? And when you shoot, you shoot well. Uh, you shoot accurately. You know? And more accuracy required the farther away he happens to be. Um, but, uh, you know, but you get the idea. What I would tell guys is this, okay? Focus on developing a very smooth draw. Not the kind of draw you see in competitive realms and stuff like that, but a smooth draw. It doesn't have to be a second and a half. It could be longer than that as long as it's smooth Mm -hmm. and and safe and you do it the same way every time, okay? Uh, Practice your accuracy. Practice accurate shooting. A lot of guys, they go to the range and they just like to make noise and make brass and, and all this kind of stuff. I would say that, you know, you, you need to be able to practice uh, shooting faces. You know, start off at five yards and work your way back. If you can put, you know, your magazine into a face target, but I'm talking about like an eight and a half to 11 inch sheet of paper, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, out to 25 yards, I think that's a, that's a good skill to have. And that's a skill that's very applicable in these active shooter events. Um, we want to go for faces because... Uh, we want to turn them off quickest and with the least amount of gunfire. If it takes you 20 rounds, well, you know, a lot can go wrong with 20 rounds. If you, if you, you take them out in five rounds, a lot less can go wrong. Um, you bypass any issues with uh, bomb vests. You bypass any issues with body armor. You bypass any issues that may be present, you know, due to performance enhancing drugs and things like that. You know, most things on earth, you shoot them in the face, they'll go down. So, that should be the policy. Um, so just, you know, nice and smooth draw and develop your accuracy and also develop your mindset because this is not the same as a self-defense shooting. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it is psychological. Certainly you have to have the shooting skills. You got to have, uh, but you got to have uh, all the software too. You got to have that warrior mindset. So in the courage, yes. the bravery to go up against this guy with the AR-15 or, or uh, whatever, but, you know, I, I want to let you know, you are the one, and I don't know how this, this isn't going to sound good probably, but, you know, you're the one who turned me on to, to headshots. I, uh, you know, I really, you know, five years ago, I was probably, you know, more, uh, you know, NRA type, you know, you shoot center of exposed mass till the threat stops. And basically you're playing to the lowest common denominator. You're thinking, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to be a crappy shot anyway, so I got to aim for the sternum and maybe I'll hit him in the arm kind of a mentality. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you start talking about center of face and, you know, uh, all this stuff. And I just started practicing and practicing, you know, upgrading my hardware and uh, got to the point where, you know, I, I think I, I can make a uh, face shot, and after that, you mm-hmm. just gotta you gotta do it like yeah. every day, every week, and because if you if you never practice for that, of course you're not gonna be able to do it. That's true. In yeah. in real life, uh, G- Gabe, um, do you have some drills uh, that you like that would help in this uh, mass shooter scenario? Yeah, you know I like to keep things really simple. Um, you know. Take just a, you know, go to the printer, right, and just steal a bunch of paper, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and just take that out to the range and put up an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper uh, and, uh, you know, and practice shooting that from, you know, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 yards, you know, and if you can't put them all at 25 yards, stay at 15 until you can do 15 really easy, mm-hmm. then go back, and then, you know, and so on and so forth. Once you get really good at that, fold that sheet uh, in half, you know, so now you have a... Uh, you know, what, eight and a half by, what is it, five and whatever, five and a half, mm-hmm. uh, and, and put that up there and repeat it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and just increase the speed little by little. It's not a matter of speed because, you know, the bad guy, he doesn't necessarily know that you're even on the same planet with him. Yeah. Um, you know, there there is a degree of urgency, but not in the sense of, okay, shoot already, stand by, beep, now that kind of stuff. Um, but... It's the kind of uh, urgency that requires smoothness because, you know, you are going to be agitated. There is going to be a dump of adrenaline and so on, and you don't want that to 
confound what you are trying to accomplish. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's not keep it nice and simple. Just get, use that piece of paper, go out to the range and practice shooting headshots. Well, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, deliberateness, you know, deciding ahead of time that when I get in this situation, this is what I'm going to do. That takes out Mm -hmm. all that hesitation. Uh, you know, I, I think that's important too. Uh, but you might be you might take a, a full two seconds to get your your first shot off sure. um, and, and that's then, okay yeah as long as it's a good shot it's precise it's in that face area you're gonna put them down so well Gabe this has been a really good talk it's I always walk away encouraged when I talk to you this is gonna sound Thank silly you. but when I get done talking to you I just want to go out and do man stuff you know I'll, I'll probably uh, <laughs> You know, go out and cut a load of firewood or, you know, yeah. uh, lift some weights heavy. or shoot a gun or something, you know. So uh, that's good. You know, you know what that reminds me of? Uh, what is that verse? Uh, I think it's Proverbs twenty-seven, seventeen. As as iron sharpens iron, so when one person sharpens oh, yes. another. It's like, indeed. I, I just I just love that that concept, that idea of one man talking to another man about man stuff and being tough mm-hmm. and being masculine and you know standing up for you know people who can't protect themselves so hey you yes. encourage me thank you <laughs> all right well hey uh once more how can people get a hold of gabe suarez uh visit us at uh www.suarezinternational.com and then our forum www.warriortalk.com Sounds awesome. All right, Gabe, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show today. Thanks, Skip. All right. Okay, folks, we got a two-minute break while we're away. Go ahead and check out SuarezInternational.com. See what Gabe Suarez is all about. If you haven't trained with him, uh, you need to do that. At the very least, go on to his uh, YouTube site, his website, and uh, watch some of his videos. Excellent articles, excellent training. All right, we're going to be back in two minutes and with segment four, the wrap-up, and I will tell you what I really think. This is Skip Corey on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my dad's Home Defense Radio Show. You're going to love it. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 19 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book, by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom Skip, it's time for the Armed America Report What do you have, Bill? All of us here at Frontlines of Freedom want our listeners to get trained and get armed in that order We fully support the right to keep and bear arms for all law-abiding families and we encourage you to find out about the laws governing use of deadly force in your state and follow them to the letter And of course, don't forget to follow the rules of safety and common sense whenever you're carrying a firearm to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Colonel? Well, a home intruder met his end after breaking and entering into the wrong home in California. Just before 7 a.m., a burglar entered a Lancaster, California home. Video surveillance showed the intruder tried to break into another home prior to this attempt. The man came in through a downstairs rear window and walked to an upstairs bedroom inside the family's home. Fearing for the safety of his children, The homeowner armed himself and fired off a shot, which struck the intruder in the upper torso, killing him. According to police, the family was unharmed during the incident. Thanks, Colonel. The laws differ slightly from state to state when it comes to home intruders. Some states call it breaking and entering. 
there is some confusion as to what that really means. Many people believe that in order for the crime of breaking and entering to occur, the invader must use some type of force, either to open a window or door, or to break down the door, or to break a window. But in most states, this is not the case. Think of the door or window of your house as being protected by an invisible force field. If a home intruder breaks the boundary of that physical barrier and enters your home uninvited, then, according to the laws of many states, he has committed breaking and entering. There are cases where burglars have walked through open doorways and still been convicted of breaking and entering. In other states, they could be charged with home burglary. In those states, the intruder must enter the home without permission, but it must also be proven that he intends to commit a crime while inside the home. The laws of most states vary when it comes to criminal charges and sentencing guidelines. In some states, you can be charged with forcible entry or even unlawful entry. Some states require the illegal entry to be a place where someone lives, sleeps, and dwells. Still, in other states, you can be charged with forcible entry for breaking into a vending machine. As you can see, the laws of all states can be varying and complex, and I highly recommend you check out the laws of your state with a licensed attorney in your jurisdiction. But make no mistake about it. Anytime someone enters your dwelling uninvited, they are committing some type of crime, whether it be called illegal entry, forcible entry, burglary, home invasion, breaking and entering, or even criminal trespass. In this particular case, the homeowner in California did the right thing by using his firearm to protect himself and his family, and Frontlines of Freedom salutes his bravery, his sound judgment, and his superior marksmanship. Thank you, Skip. Right on. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my new book, Concealed Carry for Christians. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and your family, and that includes people of faith. Our churches are not as safe as they used to be, and that's why I included chapters on forming church safety teams and stopping mass shooters. You can get Concealed Carry for Christians real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Concealed Carry for Christians, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Concealed Carry for Christians by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Segment four, the wrap-up. How about that Gabe Suarez from Suarez International? Uh, Folks, if you haven't trained with Gabe, I really think you ought to... Start thinking about that. The online training is great, but the training in person is even better. It's always that way. There's nothing better than trigger time with someone who knows what the heck they're talking about. Someone who's been there, who's done that, who's got the t-shirt. So, highly recommend Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Go ahead and check them out. Now, I wanted to uh, go over an article Uh, here in the wrap-up that uh, Gabe had written. It was in his uh, newsletter, and that's what prompted me to to call Gabe and uh, get him on the show again. His latest article is entitled, Don't Get Shot by the Police During Active Shooter Engagement. And it reads as follows. It is a timing issue, of course, continuing on the discussion of how to not get shot by police. In my opinion, that's pretty important stuff, right? You don't want to get shot by the bad guy, but, you know, if you've survived the active shooting event and then get shot in the aftermath by the police, what have you accomplished? I mean, you took the bad guy out, but you're still dead. I was pointed in by neighboring agencies at least a dozen times when I was working narcotics and gangs. So let's look at this. And I will say, too, you need to think quickly. Be quick to adapt and don't let your ego get you killed. Important safety tip. Number one, police arrive first and contain matters before you are ever involved. If you're a police officer, you do whatever your agency says to do. If you're a private citizen, there's nothing for you to do. Go home and do some pull-ups. Cops got it in hand. Stay out of the way. Number two, the police arrive as you are engaging or police arrive immediately after you engage. Statistically, this is unlikely as there has always been, at least in the events I have studied, a marked lag time in response as the information is relayed through channels. 
Add to that the lack of undirected initiative on the part of most law enforcement personnel today, and you will get nothing until dispatch gets the info out to the field units. At Virginia Tech, there were units a few yards away, but delayed response until they got word about what was happening and what they should do. And even in such cases, the law enforcement responders are looking at what each person is doing to form a picture of what needs to be done. A man armed with a pistol, unlike a rifle, could be an off-duty officer or a person defending themselves. In discussions with current law enforcement, the perspective is just that. That said, it could happen and confusion could take place. Therein lies the danger. And thereby my article in How to Mitigate the Threat to You by Mitigating the Apparent Threat to Them. Number three, police arrive afterwards. This depends how soon. If they seem focused on you, you have your hands empty, op open palms toward them, and get on your knees. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> if, and folks, if you have a gun in your hands, the police will be focused on you. Trust me on that. The snake flag people may have issue with this. I, I think he's referring to the, uh, what, the Gadsden flag there? Uh, the don't tread on me flag. But it's like arguing the rain has no right to wet you down. You will take a non-aggressive posture of the sort they will put you in at gunpoint on your own direction. Or by force. Or you will get shot. Kind of simple like that. I know it's TV, but I recall the old 24 show. That's the one with uh, Kiefer's, Kiefer Sutherland. I, I love that show. When Bauer was contacted by mistake as a possible suspect... He would do just that, and it is one of the few things I agreed with there. But even if they are not focused on you, you will not be slinking off to the bat cave for a snifter of scotch with Alfred. I love his sense of humor. <laughs> Standard operating procedure is to contain everyone, and every swinging Johnson will get detained and searched, and it will be determined if they are an additional suspect. So do as they tell you. It will all get sorted out, and you will get the Medal of Valor, an interview with Anderson Cooper, and a movie deal. I'd like to get at that in writing, though, you know. But right now, right now, put your damn hands up and do as you are told by the guys with the MP5s. <laughs> very, very true sage advice from Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. How to survive the aftermath of a mass shooting event. All right. We are running out of time. Actually, you know, let's be honest. We ran out of time a long a long time ago, but hey, I'm still here. I'm still talking and uh, still having fun, but it's time to go. So, just a few final words here. Go to Amazon.com, get Concealed Carry for Christians. That book is flying off the shelves, folks. Uh, that is by far the most popular book that I've ever uh, written. And if I have to sum it up, it, it's about moral use of deadly force. It's about encouraging people who carry guns for personal uh, defense. So check that out. Concealed Carry for Christians by Skip Coriel on Amazon.com. Also check out Suarez International, suarezinternational.com. See what he can do for you. Coming up, we've got lots of advanced classes here, right here in Michigan, Midwest Tactical Training, mwtac.com, michaelwhiskeytangoalphacharlie.com, or go to shootingclasses.com to check that out. Um, also, <clears throat> in the uh, weeks to come, my new cameraman, Phoenix Coriel, my nine-year-old cameraman, we're going to be doing some uh, short videos uh, for YouTube and for the Home Defense Show, so uh, look forward to that. Next week on the Home Defense Show, we're going to be having uh, an Iraq war vet, an Army veteran, talk about his wartime combat experience and how his Army career was ended because of the final firefight, the final battle that he was in. You're going to find this fascinating. Uh, boy, this guy's will to live, how he didn't give up, the struggle, even the aftermath, the years following uh, his uh, departure from the Army. You're going to love that. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, one other thing. Second Amendment March. Go to twowaymarch.com. 
Give us a donation, folks. It costs a lot of money to put this march on, and we need you to pony up 10 20 bucks, whatever you can afford. Go to 2amarch.com, give us your donation so we can go ahead and uh, do this uh, rally on uh, September 10th at the Lansing State Capitol. Well, okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order, it's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need the protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on the Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!